Today I'm going to be talking about Instant Multipass. Um, it's uh, enabling portable KYC for financial institutions through the use of verifiable credentials that of course are being leveraged by some of the tools here at Hyperledger. Uh, my name is Alberto Leon. I'm a lead software engineer at Instant. And at Instant, we like to imagine a world where we own and control your digital identity, where your personal information is more secure, privacy, and is enhanced, and you no longer have to rely on countless passwords or vulnerable centralized databases. And this is the promise that decentralized identity offers. Also at Instant, uh, we believe that decentralized identity can significantly improve the identity verification and fraud detection process and overall reduce friction. Today, many people have uh, cumbersome and repetitive identity verification steps, but with decentralized identity, these processes can become much more seamless and user-centric. So we use something called verifiable credentials and which are you know open standards that are easy, easy able, easily verifiable, independent of the issuer, making user credentials portable. This portability is especially useful for KYC processes, which require the same compliance checks to be performed repeatedly each time a user is onboarded with a new service. So what is Instant Multipass? Well, it's a decentralized identity verification and KYC solution using Hyperledger tools, libraries, and frameworks. This enables end users to sign up once and never again. Your end user, without any friction, can access your products and services with one click. Business businesses no longer need to trade off end user experience with security risk, fraud, and compliance requirements. So Multipass and Instance uh, followed a self-sovereign identity model, which allows individu individuals to control their own identity information. Unlike traditional identity systems where organizations hold and manage your data, SSI gives you the power to manage your own identity data. And this approach to identity management ensures privacy, security, and user control. So self-sovereign identity uses this famous trust triangle, uh, which enables sort of three actors in the whole trust triangle, which involve issuer, holder, and a verifier. Except that in sort of self-sovereign identity, we have a, another layer of technology called verifiable re data registry, which represents usually the blockchain or some sort of distributed ledger. So in getting into the concept of verifiable credentials, this is a digital representation of an actual ID. In today's world, you know, we have, you know, driver's license, state issued IDs, student IDs, maybe even a diploma can be a sort of ID. So we're trying to take that same concept into the, the digital world, right? This is kind of where this whole wave of Web3 comes in, right? So Usually the person that issues that ID, for example, in the real world scenario, a DMV might issue a driver's license, which uh, plays the role of an issuer, right? And it's a, it's a trusted authority in that sort of world. And then somewhere else, a verifier, maybe a bank that's trying to validate who you are, might play the role of a verifier. So the, the great thing about verifiable credentials is that they're, they're signed with certain cryptography, they're portable and secure, and they allow individuals to control their own data. So how it works? Well, other than verifiable credentials, Instant offers a fully managed AI identity verification and fraud detection platform where users are validated and given a level of assurance for the pass. This is a very essential step to the issuance of the pass as it's the combination of human and non-human detections, location and devices information, and machine learning models for PII verification. So essentially what this means is Instant offers the, the data verification and once we say that, you know, um, John Doe is, you know, a real person, his data is validated, we only then issue a pass. So you can think of it, even this as an example of a pass, right? So when I got this pass, they asked for my ID, and only then was I issued this pass. So this, this can be a, a form of a verifiable credential, except verifiable credentials live in digital wallets. So... I'll talk about that next. So again, one of the great things about verifiable credentials is selective disclosure. A really good example of 
how this can work or might not work in the real world is if you go to a liquor store and you want to buy some liquor, right, you'll show your ID to the person at the counter. But once they grab your ID, they're seeing not just your date of birth, they're seeing your address and all their information. So one of the great things about uh, verifiable credentials and working with something called a non-creds is you can disclose as much information as you please. So you can only show them the date of birth, for example, or maybe even zero knowledge proof, which is also handled by some of the tools at Hyperledger. So that's also an option which makes it more, you know, enhanced in terms of privacy and um, security. And this is also great for KYC and the process in general when trying to validate that. Sure. I, I mean, I'm happy to answer after. Uh, so. oh, cool. <laughs> no worries. So actually, I was about to show a demo. Maybe that answers some of your questions. So uh, a quick demo here would be to kind of show you guys. So let's say this is Acme Bank, a, a financial institution, right? Usually to onboard them, you would need to kind of fill in your data, right? Sign up to, you know, do their, their, their form, right? You will give like a name, last name, basic information, email, phone number. Um, and through this process, we would instant act actually is running some SDKs in the background to kind of uh, make sure that whoever's entering this information is in a bot. So once we're finished uh, entering our information, um, the SDK, the, the, the way it's working is our platform with the SDKs running on the website is um, kind of going to our back end and making a decision whether this person is real or not, right? So how do we validate that? Well, we have a KYC process and we are, we're kind of going through our AI models and kind of confirming that this person is truly who they say they are, right? So. So you can see Acme Bank has approved me, right? I'm on kind of onboarded already. And now they're saying, hey, there's a pass here I want to issue to you, right? So on this device, there's a digital wallet installed already. So once I, I click accept the pass, uh, it will open up the, digi the digital wallet and I'll say, hey, this company is offering you a credential, right? So I would see here it's the same information that I just entered on Acme Bank. So I would scroll through and say, okay, this is my data, this is my information, do I want to accept this credential? So I would go ahead and say accept. If I want to accept, I can always decline the credential. Once I accept it, the institution through the DITCOM protocols will send me the credential. I will store the credential in the digital wallet. And then after this, let's say that I want to go and sign up to another different institution, right? Let's say Apple Mart that also offers financial services. Uh, but I always, I've already been validated by the first company, right? So what I would do here normally is start entering my personal data to onboard with the second company, right? But if I'm part of the same governance framework as the previous company, and we, we kind of um, you know build trust between each other, uh, I can say I want to sign up through a verifiable credential, right? So the wallet comes to the foreground, and I'm, I'm giving an option to either share or decline to share this information. And it's saying, hey, this company wants to grab this information from this credential in order to, you know, um, to onboard this company. So I can accept or decline, same same way. So then once I shared my information, go back to the financial institution, that would automatically onboard me. No need to kind of re-enter my information. And all this is managed through communications through the ledger. Uh, in this case, we're using Sovereign as Sovereign Mainnet as one of the ledgers, but this is ag totally agnostic. Uh, Hyperledger uses a various, you know, set of tools that make this, you know, compatible with different technologies and ledgers itself. So at Instant, we offer uh, the actual mobile wallet itself, which is white label for our customers. We can brand it as you guys like. We also offer SDK, so if you guys have your application already, We'll offer the SDK so you can build your own wallet within your own application. And we have this available for um, Android and iOS and SDKs for Android and iOS. And we have React Native coming soon. So, um, so basically, Instant leverages a various set of tools to you know be able to create this ecosystem and 
issue credentials, store credentials, share credentials. And one of those tools is Hyperledger Areas, which is basically a complete toolkit for decentralized identity solutions and creating digital trust. Like I said, it basically allows you to manage completely from the different entities. So there's issuers, verifiers, and holders, and each of these can be you know, leveraged and managed using Hyperledger areas. So again, one of the great things about the open source community at Hyperledger is that uh, developers are very focused on making sure that our solutions are you know, decentralized, completely security enhanced, privacy enhanced, and it's, uh, and it's compatible as, we, as this kind of market moves forward. So one of the core things about decentralized identity are DIDs. So these DIDs are sort of um, stored on the ledger, right? Uh, publicly on the ledger through public keys, um, usually through blockchains or distributed ledgers, and they are sort of owned by the person that creates it. There's also something called the ID documents. The DID documents hold uh, a JSON in this format, which contain a various set of um, metadata. Some of those might be like a public key or even like a, you know, who who is issuing that or who 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 stored that uh, credit that DID on that ledger. This is the basic DID architecture. The main thing to take away from this architecture is that the DID lives on the verifiable data registry or in other words, basically the, the, the blockchain. So the, the verifiable data registry, as I just explained, is used to store kind of the public keys on there. And then the ARIUS sort of uh, project works a lot alongside with DITCOM. DITCOM is kind of an open standard developed by W3C along with the help of Decentralized Identity Foundation. Um, these, these uh, these organizations help create what what is an open standard of DIDCOM, which is the protocol used to communicate between an issuer, a holder, and a wallet. So there's different agents in sort of the SSI ecosystem. Uh, one of the agents is a cloud agent, which is usually represented by a issuer and a verifier. So for example, you can host this on like a, an EC2 instance or somewhere in AWS. There's wallet agents. Uh, where there's a great project uh, under the Hyperledger community, which uh, recently moved, I believe, to the Open Wallet Foundation, also under Linux, uh, called Bifold. Basically, you're giving a wallet for handling uh, verifiable credentials. In DVDR, it's another component, also a project from Hyperledger. This project allows uh, developers to connect to ledgers, so this tool is basically like an SDK that lets you that lets you interact and read from the ledgers and um, allow you to kind of go through the, the protocols through um, you know secure matters. Areas Ascar, another sub project from the Areas project, is the database or the the storage mechanism for how credentials are sort of stored in the wallet or on the cloud or wherever the agent is being based on. So this basically is the, the mechanism of how it, it's encrypted. A non-cred non is sort of the way the credentials, the format of the credentials are presented. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, uh, it has the ability to do, ability to do uh, selective disclosure along with um, zero knowledge proof. Areas Accreta is another part of Areas as well. Um, sort of the newer stuff on the Areas project. It's used to test the ecosystem through open source methods like Locust. Basically for this, uh, it'll allow you to spin up various numbers of, of wallets that can be tested against various issuers and verifiers. So basically with the help of Hyperledger uh, tools, Instant Now enables end users to own their identity and you know with instant more customers less friction zero fraud losses and minutes thank you